want to just spend this first, kind of our first session, one first out of the six of our six-week series, um, kind of explaining my heart, explaining the vision, if I can use that word, of what we're going to do over the six weeks. The same thing that I shared this morning, I'm going to share it again tonight. So it'll probably be better tonight, because I'm going to get like a practice done. <laughs> I'll get all the kinks out. And the only difference about our morning time and our evening time is we're going to have worship in the evening. So come tonight. Come tonight for worship and then screw down after worship. No, no judgment. Um, and, but the morning time, it is a different feeling. I really, really wanted to meet in this room. I didn't want to meet in the, in the sanctuary. It has the natural light. It feels a little more airy, and, but it's also intimate. And I'm really praying that as a church we're learning so much about connection and that this time would just feel like a natural opportunity to talk, hang out, just get to know each other. Oh, like, I recognize you. I've seen you. And so that's why I want to give space. And before we start, we're going to start at 10, but I won't probably get up here until closer to 1030. So if you are running late, just, uh, just so you know, you'll be okay. And then we're going to finish and again, giving time to hang out, like make plans, go out to lunch together afterwards. I'm going to plan to be done by 1130. Go have lunch, go hang out, invite people over to your house, go and like plan something for the day, go to the park, go to the zoo, I don't know. I'm just like praying that that's gonna happen naturally. We're not gonna organize it as a church event, it's gonna be like a natural friendship thing that just happens, because that's the best when it just happens authentically. And then in the evening time though, it will be maybe a little different in the sense that we'll have a time of worship, and then I'm just praying that the Lord will do that even in the evening time of just, I don't know, building friendship, having times to talk, going out afterwards, meeting up before. You know, we're going to meet here at 6, but I won't start till 6.30. Again, just giving you guys the inside scoop. So if you're running late, I'm not going to actually start till 6.30. So if evenings work for you in different weeks, do it. And invite someone. Go out to dinner and then come over if you guys are able to with work schedules, you know. I just want our prayer and this kind of women's... Thing. most of you some of you know it's been something that we have prayed over I have prayed personally I have prayed over women's Bible study women's events for a long time since probably the, the probably the day that Brian invited us to move here I've started praying about women's ministry so just because we haven't had a lot please know it's been something that I've prayed over for a very long time and I've been very intentional about not having and then having and then not having and then having so if that's caused a lot of whiplash, I apologize, but it's been intentional because I want God to do a fresh work. I want it to be brand new, completely fresh. So I want to share kind of just my heart behind women's ministry and the Bible study that I'm going to share. And yeah, and then we're going to just be able to see what God has. Before we start, we have put together like a little video, little clips, and we're going to have videos really short every time we meet kind of corny, but I think it's going to be impactful. So before we start, Kia is going to share or play the video. Hello, I'm Priscilla Dickin, and I serve in many places. One of the places I serve at is a pregnancy care clinic and at a crisis shelter for teens. Hi, my name is Kathy Jevis and I'm 81 years old and I've been retired for, my goodness, 15 years now. Hi, I'm Corinna Houston. I'm 25 years old and I'm a new mom. Hi, my name is Diana Beach. I am 43 years old. I live in Iaea, Hawaii. I've been married for 21 years and have three children. I am a military spouse. My husband serves in the U.S. Navy in Pearl Harbor. Hi, my name is Kia Middleton, and I am a lot of things. I'm newly engaged. I am a student, um, therapist, um, army brat, and from Philly. That's it. So you may or may not recognize some of those faces. Every single one of those women are part of this church. 
and um, some were here and now they've been deployed. Military life is that way. And, um, but I want to show and express a diverse of range of people, of women from different backgrounds and um, different ages, different seasons of life, different nationalities, different personalities, because I think in doing that, we're gonna see the fullness of God's heart for us. So I'm excited. Can I get, was there maybe like, maybe two volunteers? who would be willing to just say, hi, my name is, and one thing about yourself. Just one, I know it's hard, it's always hard to limit it. Just one thing, so think about it for a minute. To have one person bold enough just to be like, just, you're just introducing, this is not an AA meeting. <laughs> we're, just, we're just kind of breaking open the ground, we're just breaking open the space that we're, yes. Yeah, just say it, just right where you're sitting, you don't have to stand up, you can. <laughs> so really loud though, really now. What? Hi, Meredith. And Meredith. Military spouse. Military spouse. Welcome, Meredith. Happy that you're here. Okay. Anybody else? I have to do this okay. Because when I got all excited, that man walked in. Okay. My name is Sue, and that man's mine. Sue. So he's off limits. He's off limits. Okay. Okay. So this is Sue, and she's married. Okay. Got it. Got it. You in the front right here, um, you looking away from me, will you tell me what your name is? Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. I'm Chloe. Awesome, Chloe. I'm so glad you're here, Chloe. Awesome. Okay, and we're going to hopefully like continue to say that. Tell us who you are. And I have a feeling you're more than just a military wife. And I have a feeling that you're more than a student. But it's cool to get to know a couple of layers of who we are. And as we get to know each other more, we're going to hear all the different angles of who we are. Right? So let me just say a word of prayer, and then we're going to open up. How am I on the mic? Are you guys hearing me? I'm, I know I move around a lot, so I just want to, am I okay on the mic? Clear? Okay. Father, I'm so, so grateful for each and every woman, every woman that came this morning, and every woman that's going to hear these Bible studies recorded. Um, I pray that you would bring freedom to our lives, that you would speak truth, and that you would bring real friendship and connection, honesty, Lord. Be glorified in our times together and just meet each of us right where we're at. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Yay. We're recording this, um, not because I think that I have something so great to share, but there are some of us that aren't able to make every week. And um, so we're going to record it. it. When we have times of discussion or sharing, we're going to edit things. So I don't want anyone to ever feel like, oh, you're recording. I don't want to say anything. You know, I don't want to be exploited. That's not our heart. It's just for those or for those of you who aren't going to be able to make it, you can watch it or listen to it and then feel like you're caught up. You're not missing anything. Okay? So anyway, my heart for women's Bible study, and I've shared this before, but I've kind of had time to really settle in here to Calvary San Diego and into the culture here and into the demographic that we're in. And I feel like women's ministry can take on a multiple different feelings and meanings. Some of us have super positive vibes when it comes to women's ministry. You're like just waiting, like I cannot wait for women's ministry to start. For others, it's kind of like, uh, I'll see, we'll come in, we'll, we'll kind of check it out. And that's fair, that's fair. There's different places, there's different feelings with that. My heart, my conviction, my prayer is um, that we're going to provide a space that's open and inviting. Sometimes women's ministry can be very catered to one group of women, one age, one demographic, one season of life, one personality, you know? And that's not a negative. That's not a bad thing. But what happens, it, it kind of cuts it really tight. It cuts the lines really tight. So you come in, we all come in, we're all different, and we all love Jesus, where we want to come to have friendship, but we don't really fit into the box. So what happens, it either makes you have to squeeze in or just step out. And usually a lot of us just end up stepping out. And I felt when we first came to Calvary San Diego, a lot of our daughters and a lot of our granddaughters, they stepped out. And us mothers, we were okay, because at least we have time for a little less time. And we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to provide space for our daughters, for our granddaughters. We're going to provide space for all ages, all demographics. Are you okay with that? You okay? Ready? I know we are. I know that's our heart. I know that's what we want. 
But we need time and we need the Holy Spirit to help us make that space because it doesn't happen naturally. It doesn't. We mean well as women, but sometimes we kind of squeeze in tightly because we're insecure and we want to understand the heart of God and Christian womanhood. What does it mean to be a godly woman? And I believe there's a very visible picture of that and I want to talk about that. But I believe that Christian womanhood looks like all of you, all different, all different colors, all different shapes, all different sizes. I didn't mean to say sizes, but you know what I meant to say. <laughs> all of us, the image of a Christian woman is Jesus. He's not a woman, but that's what the image is. So whatever image you grew up with, I grew up with like a 1950s housewife wearing an apron, hair in a bun. That was what my, I pictured a Christian woman to look like. Is that weird? Did anyone else have that picture? I don't know. It's just, but then when you grow up and you're like, oh, that's not what a Christian woman looks like. Not only, you know. For me, I lived in a different part of the world, and I got to experience so many different pictures of what Christian women look like. Different cultures, different ways of expressing their heart for the Lord, and there's something beautiful in that. And I think the more we just allow God to express himself in us and through us, we actually become more of the woman that God meant us to be. And we allow other women to be the woman that they're supposed to be. So I don't want my daughters to be me. I want them to be them. 100% them. So the way that they express their heart for the Lord is not going to look like me. You know, I grew up in going to youth group, going on mission trips. That wasn't the story for my daughters. And I wanted them to have the same experience I had because it was a really cool thing. And it wasn't, that wasn't what the Lord used in my children's lives. And guess what? I'm so stoked they want to know Jesus. I, the, the other stuff is secondary. And Phil's been talking a lot about this, about what can we set down for the sake of the gospel and what can we pick up. And so I'm just inviting us, I'm just inviting us to maybe a new way of thinking, of womanhood. What if womanhood looks a little different than the way we had it shaped in our minds? Not wrong, I'm not, I'm not judging anyone, I'm just saying, what if there's room for adjustment for the sake of others, you know? And I think that there's something powerful in a church, and I'm only talking to our church here, Calvary San Diego, representing that when we do that, we experience more and we allow for space for so much diversity and change. So I want that. There's a picture that I, I watched and I saw this happen, but I want to do that. I want to show you because I'm a visual for you guys. There was a story told about a village and in the middle of the village, I think it was somewhere in Africa, I might be getting some of my um, parts mixed up, but the point of the story was in the middle of the village, they put two jars, two big jugs, okay? And in one jug, it was full, full to the brim. And in the other jug or jar, it was empty. And it was right, it set in the middle of the, of the village. And the, the, the communication or the representation of those jugs was two things. If you are in need, then come and take. And so there was a scooper that they could come and scoop out, and they could take it home, and they could feed their family for that day. If they had, then they could come and scoop into the empty jar. And there was a place of both giving and receiving. So I want our time together, all of us, including myself. I'm standing on the platform. I want to be both giving and receiving from all of you. All of you. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. There are seasons that in our life that we feel full. We're like brimming to the top. We're ready. Give us something to do. I'm ready to do. I'm ready to do. I'm not saying that. I'm not asking you to be busy. I'm asking if you're full, if the Lord is meeting you and there's a richness, then just be willing to share that, that love and that kindness. I'm not asking you to be busy. I'm not asking you to serve. I'm asking you just to just to give of what you have, a little more love, a little more grace. And if, if so some of you who are like, I'm depleted, I'm tired, I'm worn down, you're welcome. 
you are welcome. You're welcome to sit in the back. You're welcome to sit in the front. You're welcome just to come as you are. And that might change from week to week. Because for me, it changes from day to day, from moment to moment. And the word my, where my story breaks down is I think we're both. There's places that I feel kind of full in, and then there's places I feel empty. I'm both. So what if we're allowed to be both, both givers and receivers? And think about it. That's right, buddy. You tell it. You tell me. I'll turn my mic up. What if, sorry, what if when you think about the times when you feel depleted, you feel discouraged, you had a fight at home with one of your family members, things are not going the way you want, you're not feeling well, what is it that you wish someone would do? Do you feel like you need a Bible study at the moment? A quick lecture of what to do and what not to do? Not necessarily. I think most of the time we just need like a, a knowing look, like I got you, I understand. Or just maybe a hug. Maybe like just a quick hug, nothing to, you know, maybe just like, hey, there's an open chair by me. Do you want to sit next to me? That's just an option. Just giving some options. Let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord prompt you. But just think about moments when you feel empty, the things that you feel, the challenge it was to get here. And then you think, how can I be an inviting person? I'm not going to ask a million questions. I'm just going to just be there. Because a lot of times you can feel people's body language, right? You can, I can feel people's body language, like, oh, okay, they're here, but they're kind of, they're a little bit guarded. That's fair. That's, a, that's allowed. And then there's space for that. And then there's others who are like all in. I talked to Anna Sophia, and I'm already weeping. And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, that's just how I am. That's just, I, the emotions just come and go. And that, that just is, is how it's both. But like, we're allowed to be that. And I really want to say strongly, I do not believe that there is an age limit to giving or receiving. I don't believe that. And I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to let that. There's, there's no limit. There's no limit. There's no too old, and there's not too young. You know, for five years, I taught a Bible study. I taught a women's discipleship class. And I taught it through the book of Titus. Some of us know this book. And there's a chapter in the book of Titus, chapter 2. And it's the only part in the Bible that I personally have found that talks about a place for women's ministry. I don't know any other place in the Bible that talks about women's ministry. Just Titus. It talks about men's ministry, and it talks about women's ministry. Some of you may be familiar with some of those verses. It's okay if you're not. So it talks about older, women, old and older men. Sorry, before it talks about the women, it says older men teach the younger men. And then in Titus 2, a little bit farther down, it says, and the older women teach the younger women. And it breaks into how to love their families, right? How to serve their home. How to live good, godly lives. And the premise is the point, the whole point, the reason why we do that is that the word of God will not be shamed. It says blasphemed, it says slandered, but it also says shamed. Just think about that for a minute, okay? So we're not going to teach cultural womanhood. We're going to teach biblical womanhood. Loving, wisdom, service, and that's going to look very different depending upon what season of life you're in, where you're coming from, your background. And there's a place for encouragement. As us older women, we've, we've experienced things. Come alongside and encourage. But please don't offer um, too much recommendation unless it's asked. Is that fair? I have two adult daughters, and I've learned that I don't give opinions until I'm asked for them. And that's the kind of the policy that we're going to have here in our room. There's a place to have opinions. There's a place to have conviction. There's a place to have a thought on things. But if it has to do with your culture or your generation or the way you were brought up, then just discern, Lord, is this biblical? Is this the heart of the gospel? Or am I going to just lay the list to the side and give room? Okay? And that might be confusing for some of you, and we'll break that open a little bit more. But again, I'm just kind of setting the stage because I want this environment to be open and inviting, and it's going to be a Bible study. I have studied. I've prepared. I am studied through the book of Galatians. We are going to study the book of Galatians, but, and I'm, gonna, I'm already skipping ahead, but just a little preference or a little prephrase, it's going to be a discussional study. So a lot of the way we've been doing connect groups have been super fun. We've been connecting and we've been discussing. I want that for this time, but I'm also wanting to just provide a safe 
space for everyone to be able to learn and to receive and to ask questions and discuss, discuss things. Does that sound fun or does that sound discouraging? Or I don't know, I hope it doesn't. I hope I didn't come, out, come right off the gate with a harsh tone. I don't mean to, I'm excited, I'm excited. But I do feel like I'm in a little ways intentionally shifting a culture. And I'm excited for what God wants to do in a fresh way. I want it to be inviting for all women in all stages of life. It's very, very important. That's not my personality. That's not my heart. That is the heart of God. That's the gospel. I didn't, bring, I didn't make this up, you know? I wish I could take credit for it. It's not mine. So this is what I want. And we are going to hear from a load of different women, different testimonies. I love testimonies. There's something so cool about hearing from different women. But again, the testimonies are not meant to be duplicated. It's not meant to be like, oh, wow, she's so patient in that. Man, I'm, I'm awful in those situations. That's not the point of the testimony. The testimony is to encourage. The testimony is, well, God worked in her life. Maybe God can work in my life. It's not how do I make my life look like her life. That's never the intention of testimonies, and I'm so sorry if that ever happened to you, but that's not why we're going to do testimonies. We're going to share, we're going to hear from a gamut of different people and women, but it's only to be, kind of expand us expand our horizons okay so moving on moving on from that that was a blow, earful give yourself a minute I'll give myself a minute that was the women's ministry part of it <laughs> <laughs> we did it we got through it we're okay right we're okay we're feeling it you're okay with it does anyone have a really like want to give me some pushback I'll give you one two three okay moving on so um Galatians study we are gonna study the book of Galatians and before we like open our Bibles, I'm going to give you a little, pref uh, little I don't know the word I'm looking for, a little um, prephrase, pre pre preference, pre preface, pre preface, preface into what, how I'm going to like break open the, the letter, the book of Galatians. Um, I want this Bible study, this Bible study of Galatians to be an invitation. I want to invite you into the study of Galatians so that rather than me even though I already said I've, I've been studying I've been looking rather than me just standing up here and saying a lot of stuff I want it to be an invitation that God is speaking to all of us and again I already said there's going to be weeks that you're going to come in and I'm like no I'm just coming to here and that's fair that, that doesn't mean you always have to add or say something but I do want to invite you guys to go into the book of Galatians go into it just dive head first into it and I started off saying, and I'm going to continue to say, we're all very different from one another. And so this is the reason why I will never teach from a prepackaged Bible study. I'll never use a workbook. I'll never use a prepackaged Bible study because, and only because, those limit certain women in a certain season of life and a certain way of learning. They're wired in a certain way. They're super helpful for some of us. They prompt questions. They give us kind of direction of where to look. But they also exclude certain types of people who don't learn that way and who don't experience that way. Okay? So instead, we're just going to use the Bible because I believe the Bible has a way that crosses over every culture, every generation, and every way that we're all wired. Do you know that we all learn differently? We filter things differently. The way What you're hearing me say you might go away like, oh, Joy was so mad in there. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. Or you could think, oh, wow, she's really there. And we all kind of hear things a certain way, and we filter it a certain way. And God knows that. He made us that way. He created us with that different filter. And so because of that, maybe there's some of us who, who when we think of like a Bible study with just a Bible, it can be a little um, overwhelming. You can feel like, uh. Oh, a Bible and a uh, what do you do with a Bible? You know, it can feel overwhelming. And that is, I'm not I'm not mocking anyone. I'm not judging anyone. I'm not trying to be facetious. But I'm saying that it is over. I I understand that. It can feel you can be in a season of your life where you feel distracted. You're like I can open my Bible anytime and like nothing. It's just like I'm distracted. My mind is distracted. I don't I don't understand the words that are being said. Sometimes you can feel numb. Have you ever felt numb to the Bible? I have. Just a confession. And Galatians is one of those books that we know, some of us know it really well. And some of us can be a little numb. And we can feel kind of vacillated. You know, like when something hits your heart and then it's like Vaseline, it just slides off. It just goes and then it slides off. 
Sometimes that, that's what Bible reading can feel like sometimes. And then there's other times where you can just feel numb. You just feel like, I just, I don't know what to feel. I don't, is someone trying to get into the back? Can you check that back door? I just want to make sure someone's trying to come in. There she got it. And then I already said numb. I meant to say sometimes you can feel stuck. You can feel a bit stuck when it comes to Bible study, to reading of your own Bible. So that's where these workbooks can be really helpful and kind of prompting us in our Bible reading. So again, I'm not trying to bash a way of study, but the reason why I will not do that in this kind of setting is because I want everyone to feel welcome, okay? And maybe some of us just need a little bit of direction, just a little direction. You know, I was asking my younger daughter, I said, Hannah, would you please help me, like, find some, some new foundation? I'm going to be speaking to the ladies, and, you know, can you help me? And she said, Mom, just get whatever feels good to you. And I said, oh, girl, I appreciate that, but I need a little direction, okay? I appreciate, like, whatever feels good on your skin, then go with it. But there's some of us who are like, let me give you a little guidance, let me give you a little direction. And maybe that's some of us with our Bible reading, right? It's like, you, I, you can appreciate me saying, like, be you, learn as you do. But it's like, can you give me a little bit of tips? So I pray that our time together, we are going to have a little bit of guidance, a little bit of direction, a little bit of focus. But again, that's not me trying to tell you how to read your Bible. It's just, just an inspiration. Maybe, hopefully, just a little encouragement that you can go home and you can read your Bible, and God can speak firsthand into your brain, and you can understand it, and you can filter it through, and you can let the Lord begin to transform your life. And Christian womanhood becomes myself being changed by God, through God, because of God, and being 100% who I am. And what if that, being that, is super encouraging to someone else in this room? Not me being like Sue, not me being like anyone else, just being myself. That actually sets other people free to be exactly who they're supposed to be. What if that was kind of the whole point? And it is. And what if that's this, this time coming together is just we're going to just sift it through and we're going to like, God, I want you to speak. I want you to speak to me. You know, we living in Hungary, we, um, I think this is the next thought I was going to say. Do, 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 just making sure I'm not passing through. For, yes, it was. Yes, that was it. Sorry. I would always get women's Bible studies mailed over to me to Hungary. Always. Like the best. Like amazing women's Bible studies. Like incredible writers. They had teams of women that put together these workbooks. They were beautifully illustrated. Beautifully crafted. Like I, they were aesthetically beautiful. But the challenge was we would have to have them translated and provided for our group of women. And not only the language barrier, but the cultural barrier, people did not understand that there is a huge cultural divide. And you're saying, but it's the Bible, it's Bible verses. But I'm telling you guys, it's not. There is cultural things that are put into these workbooks. And again, I'm not trying to put it down completely, but I'm trying to explain to you why we will not do workbooks in our women's ministry. Okay? I'm just saying it. It's not a chip on my shoulder. A little bit it is. But <laughs> it's just that's why we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. But there's going to be time and space for you to say, I want to read this book. And Marie, you've been there. You had a book. It was like, this book ministered to me. I want to do this. I'm going to invite my girls over for my house. We're going to have coffee, and we're going to read this book together. And there's space for that. But it doesn't always fit in a room like this from a whole different group of women, from completely different backgrounds. Have you ever had a moment where someone recommends to you a book? Like, you have to read this book. This book is going to change your life. And I'll be like, yeah, for sure. I want my life to be changed too. And then I, I start reading, and I'm like, it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know if I'm not a strong Christian. Maybe I'm like mentally not in that place. Phil's a quick reader. He reads a lot. There's always, every book he reads is life-changing. My brain, I'm just like, I don't, I'm not, and there's been times where I feel really judged because I really want that book to change my life too, but it just doesn't have the same impact. Whatever reason, like the season of life I was in, my mental capacity, my lack of sleep, just whatever it was, it's like, I just wasn't in that same space. And you know what? That's okay. Do you know the only one book, the only book that never does that is God's Word. The only book that will hit us every time. In, above any workbook, 
any other prepackaged Bible study, the Bible always gets us through the power of his spirit. It will. It really, really will. And God's used workbooks in my life. It's used it, but not in the same way that he's used his word. His word that is just kind of pierced to the, to the bone and the marrow of my heart, of my being, you know? And then I'm not compared to anyone. It's just me and Jesus. And there's something really beautiful that happens when it's just I stand alone and I see Jesus and I see his purpose for my life. And it sets me free. And that's what I want to invite you all into as we crack open the book of Galatians as like a super fun, inspiring book of freedom. But I want you all to engage, okay? So that if you're wired in a different way, then I want you just to just to start reading it. Just to start reading the book of Galatians. Just read a chapter a week. We have six weeks. There's six chapters in Galatians. Just start reading it. If you've got tons of different translations at home, then I'm encouraging you, grab like two totally contrasting translations. Like get either like your King James or your New King James, and then get like your NLT and your, if you have an NIV, and like, you know, get one and then bring them in and just read both translations. It will be so like stimulating to the brain. Okay, we need some stimulation. If you're not a reader, if you're not a reader and you're like, ah, I just try, then I'm telling you, you guys, get your phone, download the Bible app. They have so many different translations of the Bible. I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. I'm just saying what's personally helped me. I listen to Galatians in the King James. He's got the thickest British accent. <laughs> Words I've never heard before, and then I'll listen to it like in the message translation or in the NLT. Like it's super relatable. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and it's so cool because it stimulates the senses. And sometimes I think sometimes we need a little stimulation of the senses when it comes to the reading of the Bible. Maybe some, maybe you don't. Maybe there, you know, for some of us, we're very familiar with it. And there might be others in here like, I don't even know where the book of Galatians is in my Bible. It's fair, we're, we're all welcomed. We're all coming in. I want there to be a space for all of you. This is not going to be a Bible college class. This is not going to be a lecture. This is going to be a time of like hearing and listening. Listening. If you're at this place, maybe you feel full and you have a lot to share, I want to ask you, come full and come to listen. You know? And maybe you're fully emptied out and you're feeling depleted. Maybe God's going to say, you're supposed to say something. Like, I feel really depleted. I feel really lost. You're allowed to say that here. I would rather hear that than all your Bible answers. Okay? That's just that. Just a little, little reminder. And so I want to lead discussion, but I want it to be a place of, like, we're going to let God, through his word, speak and touch each of us individually and separately. So, okay, I'm moving on. I'm going through. I'm thinking of, okay, I, you know, I, I think I, I, I'm very selfish when it comes to the reading of God's word because being out alone for so long on the mission field as a young wife, as a young pastor's wife, I wanted a guide. I wanted a manual to follow. Please, someone write a manual for me to follow of how to be a woman in the ministry, and I never found one. But God met me in such a, such a tangible, personal way that I will never go back to any other way. And that's what I want to invite you guys to. And some of you may say, I, I've been there too. I know that. Then you know you don't want anything else. You want firsthand, firsthand experience of what God wants to speak to you today, this summer, in this hot summer in San Diego, in the year 2022, right now. Not nostalgia, not what was, what is right now. All the good and the bad. Right now in this season, God has a fresh word to speak to us. All of us. And he wants to do a fresh work in us. And that's going to transcend when we go home and to our coworkers and to our family members. And they're going to begin to see a change. And it's not going to be, wow, you guys all look like Joy. You're dressing like her now. You're kind of taking on her mannerisms. What is that? Your hair is different. You're dyeing your hair now. No, 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 no. That's not in any way what we're trying to do. If that happens, we're shutting down right off the bat. It's going to be we step into ourselves. We step into who we are in the age that we are. You know, when I was a young girl, I used to wear floral dresses, and I had a matching Bible cover. My Bible cover matched my dress. Could you imagine if I dressed my kids like that? That would be like child abuse. 
But that, if I did that, my mom would love that. That brings back so many fun memories. That was so precious. That was a sweet time in our life. And it was. But I'm not going to continue that. Does that make sense? That's a silly analogy. But we do that. Because there were times in our life that were so fun and so precious and so sweet, we just want other people to experience it. And they don't want to. They don't want to have a matching Bible cover to their dress. And, and you don't understand why, and you're offended, and you're like, for me, that meant so much. And your daughter, or your, you know, people are they're like, well, it's not that for us. And then it's like, then it's not for me either. And I can just lay it down. And it's not personal. It's not personal. It doesn't change my heart for the Lord and what he did in my life and how much God bless you how much he's changed me and the impact that he made on my life doesn't change that but I don't have to recreate that for the next generation I don't have to redo that for them I want them to experience it fully how they want to and how God's going to meet them because that's our God he meets us in individual ways that's how he does he never he never duplicates the process it's always individual it's always personal it must be personal Everything that I'm going to share to you is going to be personal. I'm going to share my story. I'm going to share my journey. Not to be anything but just honest because it has to be personal. I can't stand up here and just read off my notes. I'm only reading my notes to keep my mind focused. I'm not reading notes because I have a script. I can't make stuff up. It has to come from my heart. It's just the way God's wired me. I have to be personal. I have to go there. So I'm sorry if it cringes anybody out, but it's going to go there, you know? My daughter's here. That means everything to me. One day my daughter and I are going to share our story. It's not for today, but I carried a lot of shame. I carried a lot of shame as a mom. So to have my daughter in this room, like, I don't care if any of you are here. I'm just happy she's here. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Sue. I just have to, you know, it was getting too sappy, so I had to, you know, I, I already, I used my tissue to wipe my buddy's nose. Okay, so let's move in. Okay, so the book of Galatians, that was a long intro, and again, this is our first week, so I'm talking a lot of words. The book of Galatians is actually a letter. It's a letter. It was the very first letter that Paul ever wrote. Paul was a letter writer. I'm a letter writer. I love letters so much when you live for a long time far away from your family and your friends. Letters are like, they mean so much. Letters mean so much. I'm just emotional. I don't know why. I'm a very emotional person. So you guys know tears come and go. It's nothing but tears. You know, don't, don't get scared. Um, I love receiving letters. And I would love to get emails. I'd love to get texts. But when I would get a letter in the mail... Oh, so sweet. And it was such a cool thing to be like, you remember me? You remember me? You know, I live far away. You still remember me? That's what a letter does sometimes. And even now, living away from a lot of my close friends and hungry, when I'll, I'll get an email or get a message, and I love those. But when I get a mail, a, a letter, like with a Hungarian stamp, I'm like, they still remember me. You know, they remember me. Is anybody like a letter writer? Do you guys like to like receive letters? You like to receive letters? get letters. Does anyone like to write letters to people? If you like to write letters, I want to give you a letter, and I want you to write this letter for someone, okay? Write that letter. And I want our letters to be reminders, okay? So when we shift into the letter that, that Paul wrote to the church, this was a church of people, new Christians that he was like part of leading to Christ, and then he moved to a different city, and then he wrote a letter. And you guys can all correct me. Like, I know that was the time and that was the era and there was no email and there was no text. So everything was letters and that's how it was. I'm like, but it doesn't make the analogy as cute. So letter writers, there's something about writing a letter and receiving a letter. And a letter is meant, you can bring it up, littles. You can bring it up because you know the tears are probably going to continue to flow. You should have known. I did have like three tissues in my pocket, but I already had to wipe my buddy's little nose off, so I already used the. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just a. I'm just a. I just. It just happens. Yeah. Tissue on the boot. Now that would be cute. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. So, 
How many of you guys, was there any of you um, there for our Wednesday night series? We did a series a couple months back. I mean, my time of reference is really off, but we did this series and we were learning about like inductive Bible study. And we were like, do you remember that, Miss Julie? We were doing, like, we were learning how to inductively study. We had worksheets, and we were learning how to kind of break open the Bible. And there was something like, what was the word? Does anyone remember the word? Like, for words that are repeated. We were looking for the, rep- the repeated words, words that are repeated. The word is repetition. Okay, I'm, I'm making these easy. These are easy. No trick questions, I promise. I'm not here to trick you. And then there were also, like, words that were, like, they weren't the same words, but they meant the same thing. There was like, they, they were like different words, but they had different, what was it? Synonymous to each other, but there was like a word for it. Kind of like a synonym, but it was called, doesn't really matter, it's just for the sake of fun. It was called Hillary Continuity. That was just a big word. It's just so we can go away today and say we learned a big word. Okay. So we were looking for like repetition, continuity, and then there were like things that were comparing and contrasting. And so we were just given a few tools just to kind of help us, guide us along the way to how to kind of break up in the Bible. And some of us got to do this through the book of Philippians. We went through the book of Philippians and we like really broke through. We had like colored pencils and highlighters and notebooks and paper and it was a lot of fun. Well, I'm not going to do any of that for Galatians. <laughs> so just so you know, like all of that was super fun. That's not how we're going to hit Galatians at all. We're going to do it completely different. So, but just for the sake of like guidance and tools, it's fun to be able to have a couple things up your sleeve to just give us a little bit of reference. So when we're reading the Bible, when we're reading Galatians, I want you to kind of just have your ears Or have your eyes, if you're willing to mark up your Bible, I want you to find continuity. I want you to find something, because there's something that Paul wants to constantly keep reminding us. Because I think we forget really easily. I do. I think I'm the only one in the whole world that thinks like I do. And I feel so alone, and I feel so stupid, and I feel so dumb. And then you come in, like, oh, I know I'm the only one. And then you get in a group of room like this with other women, you're like, We all feel this way. We all feel this way. We just express it differently. And we just need a friendly reminder. We just need someone to just remind us. I don't need someone to teach me or give me a a lecture. I just need to be reminded. Sometimes we just need reminders. So the letter that Paul writes to Galatians, to the Galatians, it's a letter and it's a reminder. He's reminding his friends that he's writing a letter to of something that they forgot. They forgot something, and it's such an important, crucial thing that they forgot that he wrote a letter, and he gets strong with them. He calls them foolish. He calls them crazy. He calls them stupid. doesn't say stupid. He says foolish, but these are people that are really close to, really close to them, so my really close friends can call me foolish and call me silly and call me weepy and call me all the things because I know they love me. They're my friends. They can call me that. I don't take offense to it, you know, so when we, when we open up the letter of Galatians, we're going to be able to find, like, I understand this. I relate to this. I'm not the only one that forgets. We forget things, and we need to be reminded. We need to be brought back. So in the letter of Galatians, I counted, and I I studied in the New Living Translation, 26 times, okay, 26 continuity times that Paul writes grace, the gospel, the good news, the cross of Christ, the work of the cross, what Christ has done, Christ's righteousness. Do you know what those all mean? Do you know that they all mean the same thing? Yeah, they all mean the same thing. But the church in Galatia, they forgot that. They forgot what it meant. And I think sometimes we can forget what that means. And we just need to come to a women's Bible study, and we need to be reminded again. And it just sets us in, and then we're able to take a deep breath and be renewed, and be refreshed, and be encouraged again to what really matters. I want to say something about that, but I want to, I want to read from Galatians, because I've said a lot of things, and I want to give space to be able to read. I'm going to read from my New Living Translation. If you guys have a Bible, or if you have it in your app or your phone, I'm just going to read from the beginning of Galatian, and I want you guys hold your Bibles. If you guys have a different translation than me, than a New Living, I might ask someone to read their translation. But we're going to read it. We're going to read it together, okay? 
And I want you guys just to be looking for continuity. Do you remember what continuity means? Do you remember what continuity means? Yeah, like a synonym. Just like a word that's the same, okay? I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just, just trying to help you remember. Okay, so I'm gonna start at chapter one, verse one, okay? This letter is from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group of people or any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God, the Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. May God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned, in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I'm going to read just a couple more verses and then we're going to stop, okay? So in verse 6 of chapter 1. I'm shocked that you are turning away so soon from God. God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news. I'm going to pause right there. Does anyone have a different translation that's totally different from the New Living? That verse 6? Would someone be willing? Would you be willing just to read your verse 6? Just read it real loud. Just verse 6. Okay. Good, so it's a different gospel. Wow. Was yours different? No, we have the same. You have the same? Okay. Does anyone have like an older translation by chance, like a New King James or? Yeah? Would you read? Uh, just verse 6. Just verse 6. Thank you so much. Okay, and I'm going to continue reading, okay? So you said different gospel. Your, your translation said different... Oh, it also said gospel. Okay, and then my, my translation says uh, good news, different, the different good news. Okay, verse 7 says in my New Living Translation, but it is not the good news or the gospel or grace, it's, but it is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Okay, this comes the hard part. Here we go. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven who preach a different kind of good news. Then the one we preach to you. I say again, what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcomed, let that person be cursed. That's like really strong. That's really harsh. But again, this is a letter to friends. Okay, we'll try to remember that. This is a letter to friends. So is Paul, like, talking about, like, this really horrendous sin and carnality and, like, going, falling into, like, sin, getting tattooed and drinking alcohol and, like, doing, and he's writing these letters to put them in their place? What, what, what is it, what does he remind, like, what did they do that was so harsh, so wrong? What was it? What, is it? what did they do wrong? Like, what? Are, why is he talking like such strong language? I would admit, picture like all the cap letters and like ca- tons of like emojis and um, the all like with like the fire out of the ears. Like he was like upset. You guys, he's talking to Christians, and he's not talking that they are watching rated R movies. He's talking that they're they forgot the gospel. They forgot the good news. And then we're going we're gonna to break that open through the whole letter. The whole letter of Galatians is about that. And it says that he rescued, the Lord Jesus rescued us out of this dark world. It says that in verse 3. Does anyone else have a different word than rescue? Mine has rescue in chapter 1, verse 3. It says, in order to rescue us from this evil world. Did you have the word rescue? Yeah? Delivered. delivered? Okay, delivered? Okay. Look at chapter 3, verse 13. Just out of curiosity, my Bible says the same word, rescue. So we love the thought of being rescued out of this dark, evil world. We love that. We love that for the next generation, that we're going to rescue them out of this dark and evil world. And there, it is dark and it is evil, so don't, don't hear me say it wrong. But, but read, does anyone, does anyone see verse 13 of chapter 3? Anyone willing to read read it out loud to me? Verse 13, chapter 3. Yes, please. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us because it is written, 
Thank you. Perfect. Right there. Thank you. Okay, so your, your translation said delivered, right? Your, your translation said redeemed. Okay, and my translation said rescued. It's the same word, okay? So the letter that Paul's writing, that, he, that Christ has rescued us from this deep, dark world, but he's also rescued us from the law. And we know this. We've heard this. We're at Calvary San Diego. Phil preaches this every Sunday, every Wednesday. Gosh, but sometimes... Women's Bible study, the theology doesn't cross over to the women's Bible study. We love the gospel. We love the good news on Sunday morning. We love Global Heart Local Church. I love that on Sunday morning. I love the book of Ephesians on Wednesday night that the grace of God transforms my life. I love Bible study on the lawn. But women's Bible study is about how we dress, how we look, how we act, how we do. And that theology is going to be connected. We're just, it's just the same message. So maybe some of you might think, I hear this a lot. But it's still like it's God's word and it's the same message that we're hearing. It's in connection to what we're hearing on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. It's all in connection. And imagine as we're breaking open these thoughts and we're talking about it as women do because we're women. We're going to hear it. We're going to feel it different than the, than the way Phil says it. I'm going to say it different. I'm not going to say anything different. I'm just going to say it different. Does that make sense? So the gospel is not different than what pre Phil is preaching. I'm just going to say it a little different. And maybe sometimes girls hear from girls and we can let it hit a different part of our heart. Because we have so many layers in our heart that we love Global Heart Local Church on Sunday. But we don't let that filter into every part of our life. Not when we're talking about my son's girlfriend and who she dates, or who she goes out with, or what this, or what that. All of a sudden, Global Heart Local Church is completely <laughs> relative. Sunday morning, I'm all about Global Heart Local Church, but other times, it's, it's a different thing. Okay? So those things are going to be a part of our conversation. Let's expound upon it. Let's talk it out. Let's talk about what we're learning on Wednesday night at Ephesians. Let's have that be connected to what we're going to learn from the book of Galatians. Because guess what? It's all connected. It's not a separate part. Our women's Bible study is in connection to Calvary San Diego. It's all in connection to. And what God's teaching us in one service, he's going to continue to build upon that in another service. And then when we start talking about it, it's going to be expounded upon in another way. And this is our summertime connect group, only for ladies. So if I, if I fooled you by calling it a women's series, it is. We called it a summer series. We were trying to push back. It's not women. It's not women. It's just summer series, but it's a women's series. And it's a connect group connecting the same gospel to women in our church. What we're learning together corporately with, our, with all of our different ages, and then we're coming together as women, and we're going to be able to, like, pray for each other and remind each other and encourage each other and understand each other so that we can walk into the goodness and the grace of God. Because something happens when it starts to filter into every corner and crevice of our life. It's not just Sunday morning. It really crevices in all of a sudden. I feel free. I feel free. Do you want to feel free? I do. I want to feel free. And I want to be in a space that is free. No matter how many candles we try to light in this room, I can't provide freedom. It has to be the work of the Spirit. So I want to be free, and I want to provide a space for people to feel freedom. They don't have to think like me or be like me. They're allowed space to work and navigate it out for themselves. Not apart from the gospel. We're never going to veer away from the gospel and what the, the foundation. Everything else, I lay it down. Lay it outside the front door when you walk in on Friday morning or Friday night. Just lay it down. Your dress code, your Bible cover, whatever. Just lay it down. And then just come in like ready. My dream at the sixth week, I told Kia, I don't know. The last week, more than a woman playing on really loud disco lights, a disco ball falling from the ceiling, and we're all dancing freely as women. Is that possible? I don't know. Maybe that's too far. What if we're free to be more than our womanhood? What if we're free to be more than a woman because of grace? 
Grace has a way of equalizing all of us, but also individually validating all of us too. It's such a cool thing that grace does that. So we're all free to be completely and 100% who we are, how God made us to be, but we're all able to connect in like a powerful way. So when that's the premise, when womanhood is not the premise, the premise is the grace and the gospel of God, and then you step on that, then you're like free to be a woman. More than a woman, you know? You start singing and then you're like, you, more than a woman. And like you're like singing to people and you're like, wow, this is what it's supposed to be because I'm more than just my womanhood. I'm not taking away from womanhood. I'm not mocking being a woman. I am thankful to be a woman. I am thankful to have three daughters. I'm thankful to have a mother and a grandmother. I'm thankful for all the women that have poured into my life and that continue to pour into my life. So please don't hear me disrespected, but I am more than just a woman. I am a child of God, called by his purposes, redeemed by his grace, and I am still being changed. I'm still being transformed, and I'm empty and I'm full at the same time. I'm both. Did you know you can be both? Do you know that you're allowed to be both? I asked a couple ladies after church on Wednesday night, a couple, like a few weeks ago, I said, would you guys come in and can we pray for a women's series coming up? And I wasn't passing out leadership cards or any kind of like service cards. I was like, we're just going to pray. And I'm like, I trust God and I believe that God is going to do something awesome. But I really need prayer to trust God and believe that God's going to do something awesome. And they were like, huh, she's a little odd. <laughs> And I was like, I'm sorry, I do believe God. I do trust God, but I need prayer to trust God. And what if we're allowed to be both? And you know what happened at that moment? All these girls, some of these girls I've never met before. They came in, I'm like, come in, I don't care, I don't know you. Come on in, let's go, let's go pray. I don't need to have your you know, background check to pray together. <laughs> we prayed, and she didn't condemn me in her prayer. Like, Joy, she's a pastor's wife. At what point do they not learn how to trust? You know, she just started to say, thank you, God, that you're so trustworthy. Thank you that you're so easy to trust. We can trust you. You're trustworthy. And as she began to pray, I started to feel all my fears and insecurities kind of start to crumble. Just a little bit. They came back up again. They came back up so fast again. But they just started to crumble down. And I began to feel free. And then as quickly as it comes, I need another person to pray for me. And then I can pray for them. Every time I get to stand on the platform when Phil will ask us to come up and be available to pray, I love that because I get an opportunity to be prayed for. So anyone that comes up to me and says, will you pray for me? I need prayer. I'm like, 100%, but will you pray for me after? So we can pray for each other. We want to be, prayed for, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Let's pray. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, will you pray that for me? Because we are not one or the other. We are not going to teach a hierarchy. There's no hierarchy in our relationship with Christ. We have one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus. So I don't hear special things that you don't hear. I just have the honor and the privilege to get to facilitate a little gathering like this with a load of help, so much help. I need so much help just to get the, just all the aesthetic. So many people helped. And just to provide a space that we can just be women, to be set free, to let God, the work of the gospel, penetrate deeper. So when we come in on Sunday morning, we hear the message from Phil, we're worshiping, it's hitting those shame points, those parts of our hearts that are kind of off to the side. We talked about through the letter of Philippians that a lot of times as women, we come to church and we all have the cones of shame on. My dog has to always wear the cone of shame because he has some kind of allergy or itch, and so he has this big cone of shame, and he's bumping into everything, and he can't breathe right, and I relate. I look at him, and I go, oh, poor thing. But sometimes we all come into church, and we're all wearing our own cone of shame. We're bumping into each other. Oh, oh, sorry. And we're sitting, and we're trying to give each other six feet distance from each other, and we're just trying to give space and because we're full of shame. And we hear the gospel. We love it. We love it for the big world out there. We love it for the local community here. But why doesn't it always penetrate into my heart, into my marriage, into my family, into my lack, into my desires? Somehow it kind of slides off. And I want this space to be like, let's let the gospel through the letter of Galatian, like cut through the cone of shame and just be able to break through and hit us right where we're at. No apologies. Just Lord, touch us where we are and do that work. I think he can do that. So today, I kind of 
just did an intro that I called the study Freedom to Reimagine. Maybe it's not so cool or so different, but just to reimagine womanhood. Next Friday, we're going to talk about freedom over shame. We're going to go there. And don't be ashamed to come to the, the message of shame. Sometimes it's like, oh, shoot, you're going to talk about shame? I don't know if I'm ready to hear shame. It's not going to be a shameful message on shame. It's hopefully going to be a freedom from shame. I think there's something really um, encouraging and freeing when you get in a space like this with women that are so different. And there's this common ground of like, yeah, the enemy uses that same tactic on me. He uses a different tool, but he does that to me too. Oh, he does that to you too? Yeah, he does that to you. Oh, okay. Oh, we got his, we got his number. We know how the enemy tries to work. And we're not going to let it happen. And we're just going to pray for each other. We're not going to fix each other. Well, this is what I do, and this is how you should do it too. No, 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 no. We're just going to be like, let's pray it out. Let's pray it through. Let's work it out. Let's let God just continue to break shame. Some of us are farther along in our journey. Some of us are in the early stages of our journey. Some of us are kind of like off the map, <laughs> just kind of fell off the map. You're, that's okay. But we're all just needing to trek along. And what if God wants to use the people around you to just bring you freedom. Maybe I'm just going to be a, a, a voice that you're hearing monotone after a while, but maybe the person next to you is the one that God's going to use really to bring that friendship. Exchange numbers. Connect with each other. Please, don't just come to these things and just sit and come in and out. I really want you to make connection with each other. You know, I know that's not easy for everyone. It's not easy for me. I, I'm very shy. I'm very insecure. Don't let it trick you just because I'm standing up here. It's not easy, but we need connection. We need friendship. And I know that the enemy wants to keep us islands and keep us kind of to our own or just to who we know, but there's something really powerful when we come together. So the third week is we're going to talk about freedom of the fear of man or uh, fear of people's opinion. I tried to make it not the fear of man, but like the fear of people's opinion of us. That's week three. I think it's going to be so good. I think that, yeah, I think that's going to be a really good time, and we're going to be reading, so please read Galatians. The fourth week, um, fear of people's opinion, fourth week is going to be the, fee the freedom over religion and tradition. I love, I love family um, traditions and culture, but it's not the same thing with, with the gospel. Our family, our little family traditions are super special, and I want to pass on traditions to my family, but it's not the same thing as my relationship with Jesus. That doesn't fit a family tradition. A personal relationship with Jesus is not a family tradition to pass on. It's a personal relationship with Jesus, so it's personal. Okay? So I won't, I won't break that one down too far, but that was number four. Then the number five, we're going to say, what does true freedom look like? That's going to be chapter five of Galatians, women of the spirit, walking in the spirit, true freedom, childlike faith. You know, you know who never has shame or fear? Talk to a little kid. Talk to a little kid. Once they get to a certain, my little ones got ashamed and got shy like pretty early on. I think I, I did pass that one on to them. But some little kids, they don't have any shame. They will pee outside and poop, and they don't mind. They're not ashamed of it. They're so free. And I wonder why Jesus tells us to have faith like a child. Not childlike, not childish, but childlike faith. Because they're so free. They're so free. And what if that's the kind of freedom God's inviting us into? Hopefully we'll still use the restrooms inside, but I'm just saying we're just able just to be free like when it comes to being with each other. We don't have to put our best foot forward and just be like, this is the polished me. Just don't look in my cupboards. You know, just don't look over here. This is me. What if we're able just to be free? Free who we are. And then the last and final week at our dance party is going to be <laughs> the result of freedom. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 6 talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And that's going to be the result of true freedom. That's what happens. So I'm excited. I talked a long time. I'm not going to talk this long. We're going to hopefully it's going to be more of a, a back and forth banter. But I did want to just kind of give you like a whole thing, whether you're just like, okay, good to know. I won't be coming back. Or this is what I want. I will invite my daughter. I will invite my neighbor. I will invite my granddaughter. I will. This might be a place where they will feel comfortable. They will, they will have a place. You know, we have an incredible youth ministry. Carlos and Alyssa have reimagined youth ministry. They have opened their home. 
and they, they make food, and they, they're hospitable. They have such an incredible gift of hospitality, and they spend time with our high school students. Do you know how awesome that is? And I want our high school girls to feel invited here. I want them to say, like, there's a spot for you. You don't have to sit in the youth section. You get to sit right wherever you want to sit. We have an awesome young adult group. I love that we have these different groups, but I also hate it because I don't want to have different groups, but I'm, I appreciate the different groups. Uh, Aaron is doing an incredible job on Monday nights with the young adults, building friendship, building connections. They go out to eat. They hang, up, hang out late. I start to melt by like 9. They're like just getting started by 9. So there is a reason why we have different things provided for different age groups. But it's such a sweet time of like connection. We're trying to provide connection. That's why we do our connect groups. That's why we have connect groups. I love that one of our connect groups went on a, uh, a road trip, went to Arizona on a road trip together in their connect group. I'm like, what kind of connect group is this? They went, they, tried, they did their family vacation together. Like that's the ultimate connection. And I want that, I want, but it has to, it's taken time. It's taken time to get to that place as a church. But I want that, and I want it to overflow. Like, I don't want it just to be solely for our Friday women's series. I want it to impact our Wednesday nights. I want it to impact our Sunday mornings. I want, our, I want the high school groups to feel it. I want the young adult groups to feel it. I want it to be something that God does. And as he begins to change in us, it starts to affect, it's going to start to affect our, our school. You know, there's, there's opportunities. There's, if God has put in your heart, like, opportunities to pray, you feel like, gosh, I feel full, and I feel like I'm in a season of life, I'm available. You feel like starting something? You want to gather women together to pray? Please do that. Do you know how desperate people are to pray? We need more prayer. When I first moved here, Isabel, you were leading the Moms in Prayer group. I didn't need no book club. I needed Moms in Prayer. I needed desperately Moms in Prayer. So I'm going to start weeping right now. But... That's what I needed. I didn't need a book club. I didn't need a woman's tea. I didn't need a woman's banquet. I needed moms in prayer. I needed someone to pray with me. So there's opportunities. If you feel like you're in a place, you've got a prodigal, or you've got little ones, and you want to, would you just be that person of like, I want to do this. Do you have, a, you have a front yard? You have a backyard? You have a park by your house? Invite people. It doesn't have to be a church-funded thing. You do it. You feel the freedom. You know, we had a mommy baby group. We've got these young moms. We've got so many young families in our church. So many beautiful young families with little ones. Do you know how people, they just need someone to come hold their babies and just tell them they're doing a great job. They're doing an awesome job. They're lacking sleep. They're wanting guidance. And you, you, there's so many women that are going to be like, well, let me give you my five tips on how you do this, this, and that. You know, I'm just pleading with you, pleading with you just to encourage them. Just remind them. Just love on them. Remember what it was like to have a young mom a lot, and, and be, have a young child and have a lack of sleep. I just want to be, I want to be a, a buffer for my kids. The fact that my daughter's here, I'm going to protect her. So if anyone's up on her, I'm going to be like pushing them back. Don't you go up on my daughter. I'm, like, that's one place, like, you don't, that's off limits, you know? Because I want her to learn. I want her to have space to grow. And if there's, time, if there's a place for me to suggest or to give, off, offer some help, I will. But otherwise, I'm just going to trust that God's, gonna, God's got them. God has them. He does. If we have teenagers, we have young adults, God has them. We need to be a place that we're, gonna, we're not going to exploit them. Kind of the most harsh thing I felt when I was starting to plan this is a lady had said, and it's weird how like the one lady, I don't even think she comes to this church really, but why does that hurt me the most? She said, wait, you said it was for teenagers. I'm not going to share space with teenagers. And I was like, and this is why we're doing what we're doing here, you know? Because if women's ministry is meant to be a place for women to impart love and encouragement to younger women, then why, if, they, if you don't want to share space with them, well, I'll tell you what, they don't want to share space with you. I didn't say that, but I thought that afterward. <laughs> I wanted to. I always think of the right thing to say like five minutes after the fact. Maybe that's God's mercy. But we need to be a place of, that we can provide a safe haven to share love and encouragement, and to be able to be slow to speak, quick to listen. Yeah? For the sake of our daughters, for the sake of our granddaughters, for the sake of our neighbors. And guess what? We will be changed. Don't think you're going to be overlooked. Don't think, oh, but if everyone's focusing on these young ones, then what about me? What about my issues? Trust me when I say it happened. It, it happened simultaneously together. It does, God has a way of reaching all of us 
as we're willing just to have an open hand. So I'm just inviting you, and I'm closing now, I'm sorry if I went long, that we would just kind of hold this summer series with an open hand. Lord, I'm coming to receive, I'm coming to give, and I'm just coming to like let you do something new, whatever that's going to look like. So will you join with me? Will you join with me to pray that? Okay. God, I just want to thank you. I thank you so much for just the refreshment of just who you are. Only you can refresh us in the way that we need refreshment. Some of us, it's just like a, a bucket of cold water over the head. Other of us, it's a cup of ice water to drink. Others of us, it's just to have our feet washed. Some of us just need a little bit of space. Some of us just need a listening ear. Some of us need a place to speak out. Lord, I'm asking that you would provide that space for each and every one of us and that we would be willing to be just submitted to you, to you and to your spirit. I pray that you would renew us that you would encourage us, and that you would set us free, God. We love you. We thank you that this is your heart. This was your idea. Your idea is for women to be women and to connect with each other in a relational way. So do it. We invite you to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us, whether online or in person. We pray that the ministry of Calvary San Diego is encouraging you in your faith. If you would like to follow along with what we are doing, or hear more teachings, you can do so by downloading the Calvary SD mobile or TV app. Also, if you would like to partner with us and worship through giving, you can do so at calvarysd.com give. Thanks for tuning in.